Okay, I hope this video is gonna change someone's life. And it's a very special video in a way, because what I'm gonna share with you is actually mostly an email from a guy called Eric Gotze. And in his email, he talks about what he learned from another guy called David Deutsch. Now I'm gonna quickly, just to give context, um, talk about who Eric Gotze is for me. And then in his email, he explains who David Deutsch is. The reason why I'm making this video is that I recently read both of David Deutsch's books. They are hard to read. You really need to think to understand what he's talking about. Um, and it's really valuable knowledge that he shares. But because it's hard to read and hard to understand, it's also hard to explain. So I haven't um, really put in the effort to explain it and share it with the world, even though I think um, it is extremely valuable. Um, yeah, so I thought the least that I can do is share and read um, Eric Gotze's email. Now, who's Eric Gotze? I first um, got to know of him because he was um, the right hand, I would say, I think, and a friend of Aubrey Marcus. And Aubrey Marcus is someone that I'm following for a long time, an amazing person, um, yeah, great leader, very vulnerable, transparent, amazing dude. And Eric Gotze, um, yeah, has, has an amazing brain and way of thinking. Um, very, I would say, grounded. Um, yeah, I took a course from Opry Marcos quite a few years ago. And Eric Gotze was kind of the coach. And he would do live streams to just answer people's questions. And this is when I really got to uh, learn to appreciate his perspectives and ways of thinking and talking. So yeah, he's, he's amazing. Um, I highly recommend checking out his stuff, his podcast appearances uh, on Opry Marcus podcast. And also he has um, his own podcast. I link, link all of that stuff in, in the bio in case you want to check it out. And maybe you want to watch this video first and then see if it's worth it to check him out. So there's the beginning part of that email that I'm not going to read because it's a long email anyways. And um, <laughs> first, he's explaining that he read his book and he, he realized he struggles to explain it. And therefore, that shows him that he maybe doesn't fully have uh, understood it, right? Which is the same exact experience I had. I was trying to repeat what I learned and it's like, it's quite frustrating if, if you realize, yeah, no, I, I didn't get it fully and this is why I can't explain it and this is why it doesn't land for the other person because that's what you want, right? If you explain some something that had an impact on your life, you want the other person to also receive that impact. So let's see, where do I start? Mm. So Eric writes, so I'm going to try writing it out for you, his, you know, realization. My intention is to make it as simple as possible. I'll probably hurt my ego, but maybe I'll inspire a few of you to check it out. The two operating systems. Try this metaphor on. Life is a game. Your body is a biocomputer and your psychology is the operating system you use to interface with the game of life. Operating systems are literally what makes it possible for us to use our computers. The truth of your computer is that electrodes and magnets are manipulating the movement of electrons, and those electrons are interpreted, interpreted by a machine into ones or zero. Without your operating system, you'd never be able to send an email. You can't play the game of life without an operating system. 
there are two types of operating systems for the game of life. The first one is called the Finite Game OS. The Finite Game OS is like Apple. It's the most popular because it's the easiest to use. But the OS is closed. You can't customize it. You are stuck with what you buy. The Finite Game OS is the worldview that sees reality as finite. Some common programs are you believe death is the end. You believe scientific knowledge is finite. You believe wealth creation is finite. You believe your capacity to transform your life is finite. You believe any of your habits are fixed, bounded and unchangeable. You think humanity is a virus to the planet and that we are fucked. You believe in utopias, that there is some perfected place we can get to. You believe in some versions of the clockwork work God, that all there is is already created and God looks over it. You believe in determinism. You believe people are the problem and that we shouldn't have children. You believe jobs are finite, so AI is able to steal jobs. So I want to quickly pause here and just really share my appreciation with Eric for writing down this list. Because that's not from the book. That is, is his own uh, contribution to this whole topic that we're going to talk about here. And I really appreciate it. And so many of them are so common, right? I used to believe scientific knowledge is, is finite, or at least that we are like really close and yeah, not that it's infinite, right? And then wealth creation. Many, many people have this belief that yeah, we, we just, if you want more and you want to create more for yourself, you're taking away from other people, you know, and it should be fair that we should try to distribute all the things or all the wealth equally. And, you know, not to say that it wouldn't be great if everyone, you know, gets lifted up. But with that idea comes the belief that it's not infinite. It's, it's a finite amount of resources that we have um, or money or wealth. Oh, also, I'm not going to talk about this in here because I don't trust myself enough that I can explain it in the, in the right way. Um, but David Deutsch's um, definition of wealth is, is really amazing and it's quite different than you, than you think. Okay, let's continue. Some of the best-selling games on the finite game OS are Avoid risks so you can die safely. <laughs> Ruin your integrity to win at work because your title and your money will save you from death. Live a life obsessing about your status amongst your friends, strangers on the internet, your co-workers and your family. Be vicious and cruel and manipulative because preserving your status will save you from death. Because you're afraid to look dumb, stop learning. Starve your curiosity, hide its body. Pick your religion, pick your political party and be a parrot for the rest of your life. Your in group will save you from death. Do what your boss tells you even if the numbers on the spreadsheets represent human lives. Tell yourself you're doing it for your family. You have a mortgage. Choose arrogance, cynicism and apathy because you convinced yourself the world is fucked and rigged. So you don't have to do anything to help. Do just enough to afford your piece of land and then dip out of the collective because you secretly think they're fucked and live the rest of your life with your family on your land. The App Store has hundreds of thousands of apps. The Finite Game has hundreds of thousands of games. 
take a couple minutes and ask yourself which finite games you most enjoy. And then email Eric, your favorite, and he will make a list. That's what he's asking for. Great. I'm going to look forward to see that list one day. Okay, he continues. You've probably guessed it, but the other OS is the infinite game. The infinite game is to the finite game what Linux is to Apple. Linux is an OS designed to be customized. It invites creators and programmers to make of it whatever they want. Linux is not nearly as popular, but in the right hands, orders of magnitude more powerful and fun than Apple. The Infinite Game OS is the worldview that sees reality as infinite. I like that sentence. Some common programs are Death is not the end of the game. Scientific knowledge is never done, is, it is always evolving. Wealth creation, like job creation, is infinite. Your identity is constantly evolving. You always have more opportunities to change or grow. Nouns are lies. Three words, nouns are lies. I mean, yes, you know, when you, when you go, I mean, maybe you need a certain level of understanding consciousness, but when you go through all the nouns and then you realize, well, you know, there's no clear definition. Therefore, there are lies in a way. I love that. Okay. You believe humans are infinitely capable and as long as we exist, we have everything we need to improve life for all conscious beings. You don't believe in utopias because you know the nature of reality is to evolve and change. Utopias require a finite game OS to run. You believe God is an infinitely evolving process, not a clockmaker. Your life is a part participation with the bleeding edge of God guarding. You believe in choice. You believe every child born is a potential species altering genius. Before we go further, it is important to note there is a bug in the infinite game OS that many people run into and their computers glitch. A glitch computer is a psychosis. A glitch can lead to a crash and a crash is a psychotic break. It's like the Joker from Batman peeking on LSD and MDMA. He realizes that nothing is true, anything is possible, and his ego, like a trapped dog seeing an open door, bounces out wildly. With the help of the euphoria of realizing the ecstasy of an infinite universe, the ego starts weaving the story it most wants to be true, with complete disregard for reality. The glitch is the finite ego tripping over infinity. Some common stories are, the ego believes our behavior today will save or end the world. It won't. The ego believes a podcaster we love is sending us hidden messages. <laughs> they aren't. The ego believes our mushroom vision was prophetic and will 100% happen. It probably won't. This is Icarus too close to the sun. But this beautiful madness has a twin, and its twin is paranoia. The ego believes they are spying on us because we've awakened. Probably not. The ego believes they have installed something in us, and so we're never safe. They didn't. The ego believes the only way out of this nightmare is death. This is the epit epitome of the tragedy of the finite game OS. In computer science, a patch is a set of code that remedies some kind of glitch in a program op or operating system. Thankfully, there is a patch for the ego transitioning between the finite game OS and the infinite game OS. The patch is called the good explanation. 
the jump from finite to infinite can break brains. It can ruin people's lives. But making the jump is worth the risk. So let's download the good explanation patch for any of you who want to make the jump. Get ready, guys. The good explanation patch. Enter my motherfucking man, David Deutsch. Let me drop his resume for you. Graduated from Cambridge and Oxford, he is a fellow of the Royal Society and a professor of physics at, at Oxford, where he is a member of the Center for Quantum Computation. His papers on quantum physics laid the foundations for that field, and he is an authority on the theory of parallel universes which is super fascinating and if you read the book you will learn more about that but not in this video or in this email he wrote a paper in the 80s describing a theoretical quantum turing machine and wrote a theoretical algorithm that the computer could run the outcome of which would either prove or disprove the multi-world interpretation of quantum physics fast forward 25 years his paper was used as the blueprint to actually create the first quantum computer that then actually ran the algorithm he wrote that then actually showed that the multi-world interpretation of quantum physics was true. The dude's thought experiment became the instructions to create the first quantum computer that validated the multiverse. That's the kind of guy this guy is. But he would be the first to tell you that that doesn't mean shit. He wouldn't say it that way though. Now let's introduce his patch, the good explanation. Warning, his books are worth your time. I'm going to savagely, arguably, grotesquely simplify his arguments here. If you want to understand why this is one of the most significant ideas I've ever found, go peep his book, The Beginning of Infinity. So that's his second book. The first one, this me speaking now, <laughs> the first one is The Fabric of Reality, which, yeah, I don't, don't think you need to have read the first one to be blown away by the second one, but I wanted to read them in order, so I started with the first one. Um, but yeah, be ready. This, those are long, hard books to read, and uh, if you had to choose one, it's probably, no, it's definitely better to choose the second one, in my opinion. All right, let's continue. There are two types of thoughts, good explanations and everything else. Good explanations are stories that allows people, what he calls universal constructors, to transmute matter and ideas into forms we desire. The theory of electro electromagnetism is a good explanation. It allows us to harness the power of electricity. The theory of if Kathleen is mad at me, using facts to argue will make it worse. So listen, co-regulate and find places to play and laugh is a good explanation because it allows me to turn arguments into intimacy. A good explanation has three features. First, it can be criticized. Second, it can be falsified, that is to say, it lends itself to experimentation. And third one, the specifics cannot be easily varied. Most religious stories are not good explanations because you can't criticize them, amongst other reasons. Ayahuasca told me we were supposed to be together is not a good explanation because it's not falsifiable. Ladies, if a psychedelic bro ever uses this line, please, for the love of God, don't. <laughs> Trump is going to clean the swamp and release the sealed documents on insert date is not a good explanation because the specifics get to be changed in response to contradictory evidence. Oh, it didn't happen on date X. Well, here's why, but it will happen on date Y. There are more bad explanations than good explanations, but there is an infinite number of possible good explanations. 
We ought to train our minds to seek good explanations because we are the only known entity in the universe who can. Good explanations are what will allow us to reroute the next meteor that is coming that would otherwise annihilate life on this planet. Good explanations bring us into radical intimacy with God. And the gift of this intimacy is that God gives us alchemy. You live upon an incomprehensible continent of good explanations, all of which were discovered by a human mind. Your food, your clothes, your medicine, your home, your plumbing, your electricity, your internet, your car, your Amazon packages, your computer, your language, your culture, all of it was created by a human mind seeking to understand reality. Understanding that you are a universal constructor and that good explanations are possible is the beginning of infinity. Universal constructors with the right good explanations can do anything, can solve any problem as long as it doesn't violate the laws of physics. Physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, computer coding, these are slivers of God we've discovered through good explanations. I want to quickly jump in here and say what I also really appreciate about this email from Eric Gotze is that he took what he um, got out of this book and mixed it with his own understanding and worldview. I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe that David Deutsch um, doesn't believe in, in God or um, yeah, at least doesn't use this language. Yeah, just another quick add-on. What I find interesting is he seems to be quite sure that our biological brain is what holds our consciousness. And um, I'm not sure if Eric Gotze agrees with that. But um, yeah, seeing him kind of learn David Deutsch's work and then share it in his own words with his own experience explanations and his own uh, world views and beliefs is super, super cool. All right. So to run the good explanation patch on the infinite game OS, you've got to download a few rules. Chances are you're bullshitting yourself and suffering needlessly uh, needlessness because of your bullshitting, i.e. bad explanations. The good explanation patch is the most important psychotechnology ever created by humans. Try it. Good explanations invite criticism. Good explanations require experimentation. Good explanations seek elegant specificity. Problems are inevitable and all problems are sol soluble. Good explanations can solve any problem that doesn't violate the laws of nature. Our current understanding of the laws of nature will always be incomplete. For me, the holy grail of Deutsch's perspectives is what he calls critical rationality. I think critical optimism when I read it. It sounds better. The idea is, first, since the universe is infinite, the set undiscovered good explanations is infinite. Second, to claim a pessimistic view of any problem is akin to a religious conviction. Third, because to claim a problem is not solvable is to claim that you know the complete laws of nature and a complete set of infinite possible good explanations available. AKA, you motherfucking do not know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got excited. What this means is, the more we relax into the structure of reality, the more you let go of your bitterness against God and being itself, you will notice there is not just hope for whatever problems beset you, 
there are more solutions to your problems than there are stars in the sky, atoms in your body or doubt in your psyche. The Infinite Game OS with the good explanation patch allows you to play some of the following games. The Bodhisattva game. I choose to believe that existence is an infinite spiraling game and I have chosen to reincarnate as many times as I need to to help every conscious being remember they too are bodhisattvas. My goal is fierce compassion. The infinite entrepreneur. Wealth is a function of asset to good explanation. Everyone can be wealthy. There's no law of nature that requires people to be poor. I create and share wealth to bring as many new players into the infinite game as want to join. The infinite lover. My relationship with my partner is an infinite game. The goal is never to win. The goal is to continue playing. I practice daily noticing when I slip back into the finite game and my partner and I practice getting back into the infinite game. The infinite artist. Art saved my soul and my soul's salvation is because of all the artists that came before me. My thank you to them is to make the art that is mine to make savagely and passionately. Because I know there will be someone not yet born whose soul may be helped by my art. The infinite parent. Best captured by John Adams, I have to study politics and war so that my sons can study mathematics, commerce and agriculture so their sons can study poetry, painting and music. Whatever my lot in life is, I work it with all my heart so that my children can stand on slightly better land and they will do so for their children into infinity. Our world is starving for the infinite game OS. Because we're starving, we need the good explanation patch. It doesn't mean we will succeed, but humanity has the potential to, to solve all of the problems that threaten us. So the question is, are you going to help out or opt out? Because the truth is, if you read to this point, opting out would be a choice. And then he ends the email with a few other things. Um, but yeah, that is what I wanted to share. Um, like I said, I didn't make the time to try to explain everything that I've learned from the infinite, uh, the beginning of infinity and the fabric of reality in my own words. And what he shared in this email, I would say he kind of, he nailed it. This is probably, yeah, the, the most important concept. Um, and he made it super relevant for us, which is amazing, which in the book, is, it's not so real and there are not so many examples on how this shows up in your life and you know why or how you might not be seeing and not be playing the infinite game yeah but there are many many other amazing um gold nuggets in in that book and hopefully one day i have the the time to sit down and you know explain it, learn to explain it in my own words, with my own examples. But right now we're in the middle of building a business and uh, yeah, the focus is somewhere else. But I did make the time to read both of the books in the last uh, few weeks. So that's that. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna end the video. Now it's out there and um, Eric, if you see this, thank you for writing this email, uh, David, amazing work. Um, yeah, incredible. And I feel really blessed to yeah, be exposed to those ideas. All right, that's it. Peace.